It's time to rest again, Rebels. To let the day go. To let your mind wander. Tonight, we're going to hear the story of Policarpa Salabarrieta, the seamstress with a secret. Before we get started, let's get settled in. Snuggle down. Close your eyes. And begin to imagine. Let your mind go on a little bedtime journey. Policarpa lived in the South American country we now call Colombia in the early 1800s. Let's go there now. Picture yourself floating high above a beautiful landscape. As you look down, you can see high mountains, lush green jungles, full of wild animals, like monkeys, jaguars, and colorful parrots. There are beautiful white sand beaches with crystal clear water and waves lapping at the shores. Can you see that big, bustling city? It's filled with castles, forts, mansions, and horse-drawn carriages traveling over bumpy cobblestone streets. It's called Bogota. Gently make your way inside one of those fancy mansions into a great big hall. There are lanterns burning, giving off a soft light. And a big crackling fire in a fireplace provides a cozy warmth. Inside is a small group of people laughing and talking softly. You see a woman gently pulling thread through fabric. She is young, with rich, lustrous brown hair. She's wearing a simple brown dress. This is Policarpa Salavarieta, and this is where she works, sewing beautiful suits and gowns, trajes y vestidos elegantes for Bogotá's elite. Policarpa stitches together beautiful pieces of fabric Smooth silk, rough brocade, lace and velvet. It's a kind of magic. But Policarpa was not just busy sewing. She was busy listening. Back then... Colombia wasn't an independent country 
it was ruled by a king in faraway Spain. Some people were proud they had a Spanish king. Others, like Policarpa, were revolucionarias. They wanted Colombia to be free. Policarpa wanted independence. But instead of picking up a sword, she picked up a needle and thread and went undercover as a seamstress for the rich and powerful royalists. Back then, sewing was a long and slow process. While the royalists waited around for Policarpa to make their clothes, sometimes they told secrets nobody was supposed to hear. But Policarpa heard everything. Watch her now inside the great dark hall. As she's putting the final touches on a beautiful blue gown. Though she looks straight down at her needlework, she can make out the faint sounds of whispering. She keeps her eyes on her work and her hands moving, but strains her ears to hear all the royalist plans. Policarpa stays calm and concentrates extra hard on her final stitches. The secret conversation carries on and Policarpa Here's it all. There, all done with the gown. Policarpa packs up her needle and thread, says her goodbyes, heads home down the cobblestone streets, remembering everything she heard in the hall so she can pass it on to her network of fellow female spies. Another mission complete. Courage comes in many forms. It doesn't always mean yelling or fighting. It can also look like someone quietly making plans for a different future. Like Bolicarpa. As we say goodbye to Bolicarpa and to Bogota, you drift up back out of the great hallway, high above the sleeping city, over the white sand beaches, Over the mountains swirling with mist. And over the jungles of Colombia. As 
as its song carries on peacefully through the night. This podcast is a production of Rebel Girls. It's based on the book series Good Night Stories for Rebel Girls. This story was produced by Katie Springer, with sound design and mixing by Bianca Salinas. It was written by Matt Beagle. Fact-checking by Joe Radigan. Narration by Bianca Salinas. Thank you to the whole Rebel Girls team who make this podcast possible. Stay Rebel. Rebel.